Hello and welcome back to our unmodded playthrough of Banalord. Now, we're going to be fighting Hurunag here. Hopefully I can get in before uh, Mr. Lake Rat's person decides to interfere. And we're going to be helping this village. Now, bear in mind that uh, he does outnumber us by a pretty significant amount. But we do need to prevent our limited amount of villages from being attacked, raided, whatever you want to call it. And we're going to hopefully be able to deal with these enemies. Now, I'm a bit worried about this, mainly due to the fact that uh, usually if an opponent has a massive amount of numbers in comparison to us, then we are going to be in a really, really bad situation. Like, for example, already we are having massive difficulties because my archers were trapped behind some of the environment in the village. <laughs> Not a good start. Not a good start, but we can try our very best from now, and hopefully we will be able to do quite well, because our archers are actually pretty good. We have some pretty decent ones, and uh, our infantry are okay. They're, they're obviously not fantastic or anything, but yeah, they're going to be okay for us at the moment, hopefully. Take them down, take them down. Yes, there we go. Okay, let's try and uh, help our people a little bit more here. There we go, get them down. Nice. Okay, so we can maybe get a couple more. Taking way too much damage, unfortunately. As is always the case with me. And I think I think we're going to be okay. But we've just got to make sure that we eliminate these guys on their horses and everything. Those guys are going to be the most difficult to deal with, of course. Yes. Ah, there we go. Let me help him. Yeah, there we go. Nice, nice. Okay. So, I think we're pretty good. Did we lose a huge amount of people? Yeah, we lost 14. Hmm. That is actually kind of harsh. And I'm being shot from somewhere. Where am I being shot from? I don't see them. Aha, hello. It's probably this fella. There we go, he's dead. But yeah, now we can tell everyone to charge in. Now, the main problem that we're going to face... <laughs> uh, as we get eliminated by one of the lowest tier units that has ever graced this earth. Yes, fantastic. The main problem that we're going to face, however, is horse archer problems. Yeah. That's, uh, that's pretty much it. Horse arch problems. And gotta say, not a big fan of fighting them. As I've said multiple times before, if you've been on my channel since Warband, then you'll know that I have a huge bone to pick with horse archers. I just do not like them one bit. I like using them, and I think they're very, very skilled and, and fun to, to, you know, sort of, I don't know, see in action but to fight against them is very frustrating. So that's the main reason. But anyway, there you go. We are actually able to get 7,200 gold. Pretty nice amount. And we will be... Oh, look at this. I can actually rescue a whole bunch of units as well. And I will be doing that because there's actually quite a few of them that uh, could de definitely be added to our ranks. Very nicely indeed, actually. And I'm not entirely sure what else we should go for here. Am I actually using any of the Kuzate Hunters or anything like that? doesn't look as though I am so I guess what I'm gonna do is I will take Imperial Veteran Archer I could take more Kuzate Nomads how much space do I have in my prisoners hold oh I'm actually already over never mind <laughs> never mind okay so yeah that's not gonna work out too well so let me actually just reduce that by a little bit oh wait a minute not that guy thank you very much don't want to let him go right now thank you uh, what do we want to go for here? I guess we'll just release one of these guys or a couple of them. And there we go. Okay, that's basically all I can do. Really wanted to take many more of these because they actually level up into some really good units and it would be really nice to have them available. Actually, you know what? I'm going to swap out these guys and I'm going to get the uh, raiders instead. Because those raiders are going to be very, very useful for us later down the line. All right, so that's pretty cool. Now, I have read your comments. And, uh, well, quite a few people want us to stick around with the Southern Empire. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. We're going to try our very best to stay with the Southern Empire until the end. Uh, well, obviously not, not until the end of the series, but until the end of the Southern Empire, potentially. And, uh, obviously, if they have only one fief remaining or something like that, if they just have one castle or something, then I will probably end up leaving at that point. But anything before that? No, we're gonna try. You know, we're gonna try and, uh, fight back as best as we can. So, how much am I actually making from my workshops right now? Not bad, not bad. But, I am thinking that what we'll do... 
is I am actually going to sell my my uh, my smithy at uh, Lycaron. It just doesn't make any sense anymore, so I'm just going to sell that straight up. And instead, uh, where do I want to go? Because we have something in Vostrum. We have a brewery in Vostrum, and we also have a smithy in Maranath. There is obviously Epicrotia. Putting a smithy there would probably be very advantageous for us. So I will probably head up there in just a moment. And we'll see if I can maybe just level up a couple more people here. There we go. Let's get some more archers. Yes, yes. Join me, people. Yes, join me. Thank you very much. Okay, so yeah. Uh, yeah, we're probably going to go and head to Epicrotium and we'll buy a smithy. All right, so here we are. We're going to buy this workshop for 15,000. I don't know how really well this is going to do here, but we're going to try it. Let's build this smithy and there we have it. Okay, so bear in mind that this is obviously yeah, relatively far away from any villages that have iron, but you know, it's... Uh, it's something that I think has done quite well in the past. And I thought, hey, you know what? Let's just try it out and see what happens. I'm actually wondering, hmm, this might be a pretty good place to have a smithy as well. So if this one doesn't do very well here, then we have a backup plan where we can just go to the town over next door to it. And then we'll see what happens. Now, I have some pretty bad news um, <laughs> yes, an army of the Southern Empire vassals have just been taken prisoner by the Kuzate for a, uh, well, should we just say an umpteenth time, pretty much. Not entirely sure what they're doing there, but okay. Now, we are starting to get a little bit of cash from our caravan. As you can see, income from parties is 268, which is actually not too bad. Unfortunately, the wages are still considerable enough so that they are eating into our profits quite a bit. But that is to be expected when you have given the party a much better unit than normal. As you can see, there he is. He's running around. He's doing quite well, in my opinion. So what we're going to do now is we're going to continue our besieging and raiding and things like that against the Kuzate. And I'm thinking... Hmm. Ah, there we go. Another mercenary band has left. Okay, well, that's to be expected, of course. So let's actually take a look at Gaos Castle, because uh, that's pretty that's pretty close by to us, and we might even be able to take it. Who's that? He's got ten hired blades. That might be kind of difficult for us to deal with. I uh, really wish my scouting skill was a little bit better so that I could see how many units they actually had in the garrison over there, but it's highly unlikely that we would be able to do any kind of, you know, siege work at the moment. All right, so let's see what we can do here. Yeah, we have a little bit more power than he does. Shall we try and persuade him? We could we could try and persuade him, but it's probably not going to work. Oh, wow. Okay, this this might actually work. It's unlikely. 35% <laughs> chance. I mean, that's pretty good. That's not as bad as it, it was before. So we might have been able to do it, but unfortunately not anymore, in my opinion. I don't think this is going to work. And not unless we have a critical success on the last try. No, we don't. Isn't that, isn't that always the way? Look at that. We got three out of four. And of course, you know, of course, that's the way it goes. You know, the, the critical success is the failure. Ah, oh, well. Never mind, never mind. We'll keep trying those those little things. As long as we can get a little bit of an opportunity, then I will try it as much as I possibly can. Even if it if there is just a small chance, you never know what's gonna happen, you know? You never know. Sometimes you'll get lucky in these kinds of situations, and then we're gonna be in a great position because we will have just, you know, persuaded someone very, very powerful to potentially join our faction, and that could be the most advantageous thing that we have ever seen in the history of the world. Yes, exactly. Okay, wow. Three damage. Wow, you did a lot of damage to me right there, sir. And what do you bet he's going to follow it up with a headshot or something? Yeah, that's usually how it goes, isn't it? Okay, so got to be a bit careful here. I'd like to do some damage to that guy because he's wearing some pretty decent armor. There we go. He's dead now. 
There we go. Okay, not too bad. Everyone doing okay? Did I tell my my did I tell my cavalry to charge in? I think I did already. Try and take out the hired blades. Those guys are going to be the main problem here. Unfortunately, the archers are doing a lot of damage to me right now, which is not exactly great. So I don't really have a, a lot of retaliation power against them. But thankfully, we seem to be eliminating most of... Ah, most of their... Ah, yeah, okay. I got killed by what? I don't even see what I got killed by. Oh, well, never mind. But we should be okay here. As long as we can continue with our archers to deal massive damage against them, we should be fine. Yeah, just about. Just about. Do you see that right there? Look at that. That is actually pretty close but thankfully we were able to achieve a victory there we only lost 15 look at that we only lost 15 that's not bad that is not bad because we will be able to take a couple of them prisoner and and look at this we plundered 10,000 gold from this guy as well which is very very lucrative for me at this point in the game and I'm going to be taking some of these arboreals because they actually level up into some pretty fantastic units ah mm, yes unfortunately I don't think I might have the space after I recruit a couple of people from here. Yeah, a little. <laughs> a little bit. Nothing amazing. So I'm thinking we're probably going to have to swap out a couple in a second. These tribal warriors, I kind of want to get as many horse archers as I can get my hands on, or just in general, quite a few of them, just to kind of give us a little bit of variety in our army composition. So let's try and swap out a couple of these guys. I've got one more space. Because the thing is, is that I don't want the lords that we've captured to be able to be released super easily. So I guess what I'll do is just let one of the Imperial trained archers go and then we'll just continue onward. Because here's the thing, when these wounded prisoners start recuperating again, they will add to the amount of prisoners that we can actually have in our army. But unfortunately, I just want to make sure very carefully that I, you know, the vassals that we have currently are going to stay with us as much as possible. That's pretty much what I'm trying to do here. All right, so what we're going to do now is I'm actually going to go down to Poros now that we've taken those guys prisoner. And there is actually another couple of people attacking a village there, but they're together, so it's probably not going to work out too well for us. I'm going to go into Lycaron for a real quick second. There we go. All right, so that's all that we want to do. I wanted to actually recruit some people from there, but unfortunately that's not going to happen. Uh, maybe we can rec recruit some people from here potentially. Yeah, couple. Just a little bit, you know. I mean, every little bit helps, I guess, in, in, this, in this kind of situation. I mean, we're fighting tooth and nail to be able to just survive at this point, which is pretty crazy. So let's go in here, and they have 25,000. That's actually not that much. We're going to be gaining much more from our loot here. I mean, you can see how much money I actually have here. Look at that. Wow. That's pretty crazy. Yeah, that is, that is kind of fantastic. Let's buy some more more food so that we have a little bit more variety so that the steward skill can actually start to level, it up, level itself up a bit. And we're going to be donating... I'm going to go to the dungeon and we'll donate prisoners. Now, let's actually have a look. Ah, oh, Hurunag actually escaped. Are you serious? Just before I got here? Ugh. Of course he did. Of course he did. What a classic. Oh well. Never mind. We're going to give him over here. And that's pretty much it. Let's see how much influence we actually gain from, from this guy. One. Yeah, someone said in the comments that I gained one from the previous guys. And I thought to myself, really? Really? And I, I, I just thought, why? Why? <laughs> Why did I only gain such a small amount? I don't know, but there you go. Ooh, look what we have here. Two mercenary swordsmen available in the tavern. I think I will probably be recruiting those. And then we're just going to wait here for some time to try and restore ourselves just a little bit more. And bear in mind that what I will probably try to do is go into some auto-resolve battles against some looters and things like that. Maybe we can actually try and attack that caravan over here as well, because caravans are generally some of the most lucrative ways that people will be making cash in the game and obviously you do want to try and prevent them from making as much as possible of course they do have thieves and their thieves are probably going to be providing much more than one caravan would but 
being able to reduce it just a little bit is kind of useful. But what? He's actually able to go over the water? Ah, uh, I thought that he wasn't going to do that. Oh dear. Batania has now declared war on us. Oh no. Yeah, it seems like they all want to kill the Southern Empire. Ah, <laughs> uh, well, I guess if that's going to happen, then that's going to happen. I hope that I'm actually faster than this guy. Am I? All right, so I did attempt to just besiege this castle, but obviously, as you can no doubt tell, we did have a vassal attempt to interrupt us. Batanians declaring war is obviously not very good either. But anyway, these guys are going to try and attack me here, both together, by the way. Yeah, I'm not, you know, I'm not a big fan of that. I'm not a big fan of that. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to try and bait them away from this current position, and then we'll try and divide them in the end and try and conquer them as a result. So let's see. Okay, so can I can I do that? I was actually uh, wanting to kill Honoratus, if at all possible, and I was actually following him pretty successfully, I might add, up until the time that he joined Oros's army, and Oros had literally, uh, I think, like 550 units, so probably not going to work out too well for us there. Now, did anyone actually gain some traits? Because I'm seeing no traits here, but for some reason the character the character thing was, was highlighted and giving me an, uh, a notification that something was going on there, but apparently not, apparently not. Okay, so yeah. Apparently, they're also at war against the Azurai, as you can see. And it might make sense for me to wait until they attack him, and then I will try and pick off one of the other fellows. Okay, so what is actually... what is, what is going on here? The influence cost of proposing settlement annexation is reduced by 50% for the ruler clan. Sure, okay, yeah, I'll just spend 10 influence on this just to get a little bit of relation with Regea, I suppose. That kind of makes sense, I guess. <laughs> I mean, I don't know how much I'm really going to gain from that. Probably nothing. But, yeah, let's actually see what happens here. Okay, so I'm going to fight this guy. And there we go. Okay, fantastic. This is the kind of situation that we really, really want to be in because any time you can get into a one-on-one -on -one battle is exactly the kind of situation you want. You know, especially in this case because what, what I can do after this is potentially these guys are going to be wounded, right? These guys are going to be wounded. Hopefully, I will not be wounded. <laughs> that's the that's the other caveat that we've got to kind of adhere to here, because if we do suffer too many casualties in this battle, then we will be unable to basically act any further in this area, and we'll have to retreat back to friendly territory, which is exactly not what we want. We do not want that whatsoever. So hopefully we'll be able to do it. And, uh, yeah, I do have a number of horse archers, which I'm very pleased about. So I'm hopeful that the horse archers will show themselves to be very, very useful here. Um, uh, I don't exactly... Oh, yeah, I remember this. Uh -huh. mm. Yeah, I remember this battlefield. This was one of the first battlefields that I fought on with Bruce, the bandit lord. So I seem to remember that. And uh, I remember going up that hill there, and then just having a huge amount of arrows fly towards us, which was not exactly great, considering Bruce was a two-handed user. So, yeah, that's definitely something we've got to be a bit careful of here as well. So I'm just going to continue moving my forces up. We're going to have our cavalry and horse archers off to the side. As you can see, the enemy does seem to be standing in exactly the same area that they were beforehand, and it seems like they do tend to prefer a hold position strategy on this map which I am not a big fan of myself I mean I, I like holding position of course but I'm saying that I'm not a big fan of them doing this so we'll see how this goes personally I don't think it's going to go that well maybe I can try and use my crossbow to sort of bait them over here ah, a little bit of damage a little bit of damage and uh, yeah, I'm going to tell my cavalry to charge in now, and we'll get out my uh, sword and shield and so on and so forth, and we'll move my archers just a little bit closer, and then I will try and eliminate the enemy archers. Oh, never mind, never mind. Okay, apparently the enemy archers are being eliminated very, very easily indeed. Ah, oh, there we go. Take that guy down. Take him. Take him down. All of them. Ow. 
Shield bash. Ah, uh, okay, we're gonna have to tell my, uh, my cavalry, my infantry to charge in now as well. And I think I'm probably gonna get killed unless I can kind of back away, let my forces come in here and help me out a little bit. I don't need them to help me out a super amount, but just a little, you know, just, just give me a little bit of backup here and there. And there we go. Yeah, I believe that is indeed a victory. There we go. Yes, very nice indeed. So that is great. That was pretty much perfect how we would want that battle to go because we lost pretty much no units. And we gained a bunch of potential prisoners as well and a huge amount of experience too. So very nice, very lucrative indeed. Now what we can do with this is we can potentially take this, this momentum and go forward against our opponents nearby and potentially help out the Azerai vassal. I'm not entirely sure if that's going to happen right now because the power levels might be so dramatically different that it might just be a, a just a waste of resources for me to do that. Um, because let's face it, we're not actually a part of the Azerai or anything like that, so it would probably not make the most sense. But... Uh, you know, some of the some of the greatest strategies that we've seen so far in any of my series of Battle Lord have been crazy ideas, and um, they, you know, when they when they work and when they pay off, they're so incredibly satisfying. So I'm not entirely sure if we're going to be able to do something here. What does he have? Let's actually have a look. Okay, so he's at eighty four percent health. He's got tribesmen. Uh, he's got some Mamluk guards, he's got some heavy cavalry actually, and some palace guards. Ooh, interesting. And so what do the enemies have? They have 70, they've got 29 recruits still available for battle. They've got a couple of heavy lancers. Do they have any heavy horse archers? Mm, yeah, they have one. They have one. Okay, this might act, I mean there's 250. Hmm, I'm a bit worried about that. I mean, there's 250, I have 76. How many of my people are... Yeah, a huge amount of them are just recruits that have been wounded, which is not that bad. We still have our 16 Palatine Guards available for battle. I am at 28% HP. This guy is actually fighting very, very nicely, I might add. So, uh, yeah, there, there is another person going in there. So I'm actually going to help him. As you can see, the power levels are pretty much equal right now. This guy is coming in. Now, if we take too much damage here, which we might very well do, then this guy, that 82 guy, he's going to be able to catch up to us and probably murder us. So we have to achieve some kind of victory here, and we can't lose too many units. So... <laughs> Ah, uh, wish, wish us luck, I suppose. That's all I can really say. And uh, hopefully the varying amount of cavalry that the enemy has is not going to be overwhelming for us. So I'm hopeful that also Diul will not send his units straight in there to die, because the AI does tend to like to do that. As you can see, he's already sent in his heavy cavalry, which is actually pretty awful, um, because they're just going to get picked off eventually. And we don't want that at all. I would much prefer him to kind of wait with them but obviously that's just you know that's how the AI is most of the time so I guess we'll just see what happens gotta be a bit careful here myself because I really don't want to get myself murdered nice oh I took out one of their crusade lancers that's good that's good fantastic okay so maybe I can take out this guy oh, I'm still not sure about the whole you know timing thing with the crossbow especially when enemies are on mounts it really doesn't help me that much Okay, so here we go. Let's do this. I have a feeling we're going to lose huge amounts of units. Is it just me? Ah, wait. Why isn't Dior's units... Why, why, look at this. Why are they all back there? Why are they all back there? Okay, we're going to retreat. We're going to retreat, guys. Come on now. Let's get back. Let's do a little bit of skirmishing. A little bit of skirmishing. Seems like Dior's units are not wanting to head out there, which is really quite irritating. Because I actually thought that he was going straight up and, you know, literally just charging straight in there, but apparently not. Oh, hello. Okay, so, yeah, now now we're here. Do you want to charge, sir? Do, would, you, would you like to charge in and maybe help us out a little bit? Yeah, there we go. Okay, so he might actually be coming in now, which would be 
very good for him. No, 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 he's still not doing it. Okay, you know what? <laughs> I'm going to get all the way back then. Because my units are taking more damage than his. And he's not even bothering. You see this? I'm really surprised. I, I came in to help him and he's like, oh no, I don't want to help you, sir. Yeah, that's, uh, that's apparently what's going on here. Not a big fan of that. Okay. Uh, mm, yeah, right. Okay, so yeah, I'm just going to put my people here, people there. Let's uh, just get my... Uh, make a shield wall? Make a shield wall? No, no. I don't want my archers to make a shield wall, but apparently that is what is happening right now because I have no more infantry. So, yeah. <laughs> that's, that's not particularly good, is it? No, okay, well, let's just tell everyone to charge now. Diul did an absolutely terrible job of, um, of supporting us in this particular endeavor, so note to self, do not help Diul ever again. <laughs> uh, I can't believe it, to be honest. I really thought that he was going to come in here and, uh, you know, give us a little bit of assistance. And yeah, in the end, he totally did, but look at how many casualties we've taken now. And uh, not even the deaths, more of the wounded, you know, because the wounded are going to affect how slow we're actually going to be moving when we get out of the battle. Thankfully, we have achieved victory, but how costly a victory. Look at, look at this guy. Ah, he lost so many less than we did. Well, not so many less, but quite a few less. And I mean, it, it's grinding my gears, you know, it grinds my gears when that kind of thing happens. And look at that. I've increased my relation with him and we gained some charm skill. And that's all very well and good. And we are now able to take a couple of these guys prisoner. But obviously that's not really going to do much if the other guy, the 82 guy that you saw just before we entered this battle, if he attacks us and takes us prisoner, then we're going to be in a really bad situation. So unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to take any of these guys. And uh, I, I'll take this guy then, I guess. Ugh, yeah. It's kind of difficult to balance all of these things out, especially considering most of these units would be fantastic for me to take. But as you can see, I don't have enough space. I would have enough space once my units recovered. But that is the point. Once they recovered, yeah, then, then I would be able to have space for them. But the thing is, is that if I take any more prisoners than this, I'm going to be moving extremely slowly and we might have to run away. So that's the thing. That is indeed a thing. Okay, so let's have a look here. So this guy could potentially attack us as well. This guy, what does he have? He has... Mm, pretty much nothing, I guess. Pretty much nothing that can really do massive amounts of damage to us. He has four lancers, which could be quite kind of annoying to deal with. But I'm going to be getting out of here as soon as I possibly can. Attack that guy. Yes, attack him. Attack Diul. Thank you very much. Yeah, that's what you get, Diul. I helped you and you didn't bother. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, it was inevitable, really, considering he was moving so incredibly slowly at the time. So we did get out of there. We did get a decent amount of cash. But, you know, more importantly, we gained a pretty decent amount of experience. And that was more useful. Obviously, the renown, the renown as well was very, very useful for us. So we have 39 charm now. Still still no one needs to level up. It seems like it's a bit weird. Sometimes the character screen tells me that there's something to do, but apparently there isn't. Maybe I'm missing something. Anyway, it seems like Regea wants to create an army. And where is that? Popsia. Ah, over there. Okay, not entirely sure what she's going to think about doing, but I guess we'll, we'll see you in the next episode. I thank you very much for watching, and I will see you next time.